I'm pumped and excited today because right in front of me I have a 10 frame honey super that I just took out of the freezer that has mostly capped over honey in it. Over here I've got a, a honey super box that's empty and I've got five frames of mostly drawn out uh, comb over here. Today I'm going to talk to you about checkerboarding. I'm pumped and excited. Thanks for joining me. I'm David Burns. I want to talk to you today about checkerboarding. You've probably heard people say, checkerboarding is the best thing ever. I don't know if it is or not, but let's go along with the fact that it could be. And what is checkerboarding? Well, first I want to establish that checkerboarding is something that you do, um, you can do anytime, but a lot of beekeepers do it in the spring to prevent swarming. And so that's kind of on the topic of everything right now that we're coming out of winter. Everybody wants to know, how do I keep my bees from swarming? And a lot of people claim that checkerboarding is a great way not only to prevent swarms, but to make a ton of honey. Okay, so let's get right into it. What is checkerboarding? Well, you may have seen images like this where a checkerboard is made up of red and black squares. They're alternating patterns. So checkerboarding is just that. It's a way of alternating your frames in your honey super. Big myth, knock it down, knock it out of the way. A lot of people think checkerboarding has to do with the brood area. Actually, true checkerboarding doesn't. True checkerboarding is only done in the honey supers above the brood nest area. Now checkerboard was in the mind or the concept was created from Walt Wright. And Walt Wright was a beekeeper. He was not really an entomologist. He wasn't so much um, a, a very veteran experienced beekeeper as much as he wanted to learn things on his own and figure bees out by his own trial and experiments. And one of the things that he discovered and has written a lot about, I think he passed away in 2016, but it was this whole concept of checkerboarding to prevent uh, bees from swarming in the spring and to alternate your frame so that you get maximum honey production in, in that overwinter colony. So today I'm gonna to break it down and show, you to, uh, show it to you. And so again, it's not in the brood nest area. It's only above the brood nest area in your honey supers. Here's the concept. And it is that if you have a, uh, a hive like this, and if you look at these frames, I'm sure we're gonna find that most of them are capped over. And if bees in the spring, have a heavy nectar flow. Again, I took this out of the freezer. And they're very populated, very healthy, and they have an ample supply of honey above them in frames like this, then what we're likely to experience is a swarm. So if we look at these frames, they're gonna look a little funny coming out of the freezer. Uh, a little bit of maybe moisture on them, but you can see heavy frame actually weighed this super right here, wood and all with the honey in it. 51.4 pounds, <laughs> that's pretty heavy. And so if a colony is coming out of winter and they're building up pretty quickly and they have uh, something triggers the bees to know that they have this, all these frames above them, plenty of honey to support the parent colony that's gonna be left behind, that means it's a trigger that the hive can swarm. And that means that they're gonna raise more queens a bunch more, maybe 12, 20. They're going to put a lot of, and down in the brood area, a lot of swarm cells. And they're going to choose to pick a beautiful day when it's about 65, 75 degrees, and they're going to swarm. It's sometimes after some cold weather or a bad storm, and all at once you have a beautiful day, like I'm thinking Monday, <laughs> and uh, the bees can swarm. Now, swarm doesn't happen overnight. It's not something that the bees uh, wake up and think, oh, I got nothing to do today. What do you want to do? I don't know. Have you ever thought about swarming? Okay, let's swarm. No, it takes 30 days for a colony to start preparing to get to the point to where they can swarm, 30 days. So um, they're already in that process. And, and many of you watching this have experienced some swarms already. Talk to some people in Arkansas. They're collecting swarms like crazy as of April the 4th. Uh, so it can happen now. Here it's cold to high today, barely made it into 45 degrees Fahrenheit, which is no way close to anybody getting ready to swarm out there. All right, so what is uh, checkerboarding? Checkerboarding in the truest sense is this. It's actually 
trying to create a trigger to the brood nest below this honey super that they don't have enough honey to warrant a swarm. That's the concept behind checkerboarding. And so in order to do that, you know, right now, this is a green light, all frames capped over. And we have a lot of bees in the brood nest area. And it's springtime and we're crowded, so let's swarm. So what we're gonna do in checkerboarding is we're actually going to alternate, remember that's where we get our name from, alternate these frames so that now we can actually make the bees think that they don't have enough honey or that they need to do something about the frames that we're putting in there that aren't filled out yet. They're just drawn out, but they're not filled out. Hope you're having a great day, everybody. Good to be with you. I enjoyed being with you guys on our live stream every Thursday night, by the way. And I talked a, a minute last night in our live stream about uh, checkerboarding. And I use this little illustration here about showing uh, a hive that has uh, two deeps on it and that honey super that's filled out over the top. And that's a good trigger to say for the bees to think, okay, it's all working out for us to swarm. We got plenty of honey up there, but on the on the next uh, hive next to it, you can see the consequences of staggering or checkerboarding or alternating these frames. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do that. And this would be done, uh, I think it's preferably done about 30 days before your swarm season begins. So for me, that would be today. <laughs> and uh, I'm tempted to give it a try. I have used checkerboarding in the past. I've, I've checkerboarded some hives before and I had kind of a mixture of results on it. Um, but I've been studying a little bit more. Timing is essential. There needs to be that 30 day uh, period of time before they swarm that you do the checkerboarding. There needs to be um, a good nectar flow, there needs to be, you know, the good temperatures at night. There's a lot of things that contribute to uh, kind of nailing all the uh, nuances of checkerboarding for it to really work at preventing a swarm. But let's go ahead and start the process. So what we're gonna be doing, we only need, what is it, five frames out of here that have honey on it. So let's go ahead and move some frames out. I brought this empty box so we can just set them over here and uh, I like to store honey supers in the freezer because nothing happens to it when it's stored like that. If I don't have time to harvest it or if I wanna use it for checkerboarding or to support uh, colonies uh, that I'm making splits on, I've got this honey super, I've got some honey supers in the freezer. I know some of you probably uh, think, wow, David, I would have harvested that. But I do a lot of things with bees that require bees to have a lot of food and so, uh, having a lot of honey supers like this that I don't harvest um, helps me out a lot, it really does. It does look beautiful, doesn't it? All right, so we've got five frames here. So checkerboarding is essentially doing it this way. We're gonna take this frame of honey here, uh, locked up solid on both sides, ready to be harvested other than it's frozen. And we're gonna set it over here uh, next to our wall. Now these frames don't look like they're drawn out, but they are drawn out. Uh, I don't know if you can tell it, but some experiments that I did last summer, they, they do have a good draw on them. And so I'm gonna put that right there next to that one. So that gives us this alternating pattern of one's drawn out, or they're all drawn out, but one's full of honey and one's not, okay? So our next one is going to be this one, another frame that, look at that, just backed over. This is what capped honey looks like. Different colors, it can be from staining of the comb uh, from pollen, it can be stained from honey. Uh, it can be a different color of nectar, uh, honey as well. All right, so now we need another frame that's drawn out. We'll put that here. I'm gonna take this frame of honey. Look at that, it had all plastic frames except this one wooden frame. Some people say, oh, you can't mix them up. It won't work. Man, it works perfect. So here's a wooden frame with capped over honey on both sides. Just beautiful. So that's gonna go next to the drawn comb over here. All right, now we're gonna take uh, a frame here that's drawn out. All right, put that there. We'll level all these up in a second here. And then we put another frame of honey next to this one. Here's another frame of honey. I just love looking at frames of, of like honey that are capped over like that. It's just 
beautiful. All right, now this might be a, a drawn comb that you're more familiar with. It's been used a lot uh, by the bees and you can see it's darker. It's uh, probably about, mm, is there a date on there? I don't see a date, but it's probably three, four years old maybe. And we're gonna put that here. And then we're gonna bring over this frame here. Again, capped over honey on both sides. And then our last frame against the wall is gonna to have to be this frame here that is our um, drawn out, but no honey on it. Doubt it's gonna fit, but we'll make room here in a second. So what we have here is checkerboarding. So it works out color-wise almost for us. I wonder if I can change this one to make it make the color look better. Eh, well, don't worry about it. But anyway, we've got a honey filled, a honeycomb that's filled, wax uh, foundation only, honey, wax foundation, honey, wax foundation, honey, wax foundation, honey, wax foundation. See how they alternate? Now, what we're trying to do is create an environment for the bees where they're gonna feel like, uh-oh, we can't swarm. This is the concept of checkerboarding. It's not something I'm, I'm saying I invented. It's been, it's been around for a while. I'm just explaining the process and the thoughts behind uh, why they have come up with the idea of checkerboarding. It's so that the bees will realize that they have work to do above them and their honey supers. And it will cause them to say, we can't swarm because we don't have that level of honey above us that we really want to have prior to a swarm. Yeah, that's gonna fit now, but it's gonna be tight. And the reason this box is tight, uh, there's just a lot of propolis uh, all in these, uh, around the edges of the frames and in the frame hanger grooves and all that. So now we're left over here uh, with five more frames that you can see here. Uh, the, this is just some that I froze the whole super. So I can use this in another super with five more drawn comb. Now I know you're gonna be wondering, David, I don't have any drawn comb. I, this is my second year in beekeeping, what do I do? Everything that I've looked into and researched about checkerboarding, they really do advocate using drawn comb. So I'm not saying you can't use uh, undrawn foundation, but I would think you won't have the same results. So checkerboarding, you know, I want to stick to what checkerboarding is. Checkerboarding does require that you have drawn comb between the honey uh, cap frames like that. Now, when this goes on your uh, two deeps or your single deep, whatever, it is supposed to alleviate swarming because the bees are going to be working uh, these frames that are up here that haven't been capped over with honey yet. They're going to have to fill those up, cap them over. It seems to trigger the bees not to want to swarm, but to work on these checkerboarded supers. Now you can use a queen excluder below these supers, above your brood nest area if you want to. Uh, that's entirely up to you. If you're a skilled beekeeper, got a lot of experience under your belt, you might not want to use a queen excluder, but then you're going to have the responsibility of keeping your queen down below and out of these supers. You don't want the queen up here laying eggs. If you don't have that skill set or the time, then a queen excluder is gonna help you out immensely. Now on this same hive, you can put another super on just like this. Oh, <laughs> that's heavier, that's 25 pounds. <laughs> From a sitting position, it kind of caught me off guard. <laughs> it's like, whoa. So anyway, you could actually get five more drawn out comb and go boop, boop, boop in between these now you're gonna have two supers. Let me caution you to try not to put too many supers on at one time because of small hive beetle. It gives them a place to hang out, lay eggs, drill down into stuff that they shouldn't and uh, multiply, reproduce, because you won't have as many bees up here if you keep stacking more and more and more on top of this. Now, once you get a lot of bees in this bottom super or the, you know your first super, you got a lot of bees, well, certainly then you can then uh, stagger the frames, alternate them, and bees will be on this pretty quickly. Now, some people that do this claim to have 11 or more supers stacked on top of each other. 
That had to be before Smahi Beetle Day. <laughs> that would be like 11 supers filled with beetles. And uh, if you don't have Smahi Beetle problems in your area and not a threat to you, it's not so much of an issue. Back in the day before beetles were in the US, uh, it was nothing for us to stack supers on and such. But now we need bees to be protecting all that honey with their presence and kind of jailing pushing those beetles to one side or something. By the way, I've really been impressed with how many of you have been subscribing to my channel. Thanks so much. Bobblehead David here on job. Some people say he looks like he's wearing an astronaut suit. Others have said he looks like he's in pajamas. This is supposed to be a bee suit, <laughs> okay? And uh, anyway, he's here to say please subscribe. Appreciate it a lot. Click on the bell so you'll be notified each time I make a new video, like checkerboarding. In fact, for those of you that are brand new to beekeeping this year and you're biting your nails thinking you're not gonna do it right, you're gonna mess it up, the whole thing's just gonna turn upside down on you. Let me encourage you to watch a video that I made. Made it several years ago, but it's still the same information about how to start because how to start is basically the same. How to start beekeeping and to help you out. I'll see you guys over there.